Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Hebler's theory of opportunity cost. First of all, what do you mean by opportunity cost? Opportunity cost means loss of other alternative when one alternative is chosen. Opportunity cost means loss of other alternative when one alternative is chosen. For example, you have limited resources. With this limited resources, you have only two options. Either you can produce mobile or you can produce tablet. Suppose you decided to produce mobile and give up tablet. And opportunity cost of producing mobile is loss of income which you can earn from the sale of a tablet. But now you can't because you give up tablet, you are only producing mobile. So we can say the opportunity cost is loss of other alternative when one alternative is chosen. In this theory, we will talk about three types of opportunity cost and we will also see how we can do trade under these opportunity costs. And opportunity costs are constant opportunity cost, increasing opportunity cost and decreasing opportunity cost. Now we will see assumption. There is two commodities, two countries and two factor of production. Perfect competition in economy and price of commodity is equal to marginal cost. Marginal cost means cost of producing additional unit. And here we assume price of commodity is equal to marginal cost. And price of each factor is equal to marginal productivity. Marginal productivity means change in productivity after employing one more factor of production. And here we assume price of factor is equal to marginal productivity. And there is fixed factor supply, full employment, constant technology and factors are mobile within country but cannot move between countries. For example, labor can work anywhere within one country but cannot go for work between countries. First of all, we will see what is constant opportunity cost and how we can do trade under constant opportunity cost. Constant opportunity cost means opportunity cost of producing next unit will remain constant, it will not change. Constant opportunity cost means opportunity cost of producing next unit will remain constant, it will not change. For example, producer always give up two units of tablet in order to produce one more unit of mobile. It will be called constant opportunity cost. In this diagram, you can see on x-axis we have mobile and y-axis we have tablet. Here you can see when producer is increasing one more unit of mobile, 1, 2, 3, 4, he is giving up two unit of tablet, 8, 6, 4, 2. You can see only one unit of mobile is increasing, but producer is giving up two unit of tablet. So it will be called constant opportunity cost because constant opportunity cost means opportunity cost of producing next unit will remain remain constant it will not change now we will see international trade under constant opportunity cost here we assume we have only two countries a and b if slope of opportunity cost curve is same in both countries then there is no international trade obviously when you have same opportunity cost in both goods there is no gain from trade but Trade is possible or we can say international trade take place when slopes of opportunity cost curve are different in both countries. In this diagram you can see on x axis we have x good and y axis we have y good. This AB, this line shows A country and this A1 and B1, this line shows B country. Here you can see A country can produce OA quantities of Y, but B can produce only A1 quantities of Y. A OA is more than OA1, that means A can produce more quantities of Y as compared to B. So we can say that A have comparative advantage in production of Y. That's why if international trade will happen, then A will do specialize in production of Y. On the other hand, you can see B can produce OB1 quantities of X, but A can produce only OB quantities of X. You can see B can produce more quantities of X as compared to A. That's why B will do specialize in production of X. So, if international trade occurs, 
दर कंट्री ए विल स्पेशलाइज इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ वाय दैट मीन्स कंट्री ए विल इंक्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ वाय एंड विल रिड्यूज प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड विल डू इम्पोर्ट ऑफ एक्स फ्रॉम कंट्री बी ऑन दिन अदर हैंड कंट्री बी विल स्पेशलाइज इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड विल इंक्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ एक्स बट रिड्यूस प्रोडक्शन ऑफ वाई एंड विल डू इम्पोर्ट ऑफ वाई फ्रॉम कंट्री ए नाउ सपोज इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड अकर्स आफ्टर इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड कंट्री ए विल डू एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ ए एस यूनिट ए एस इज इक्वल टू एन आर इन एक्सचेंज कंट्री ए रिसीव एस आर यूनिट ऑफ एक्स गुड एज अ इम्पोर्ट फ्रॉम कंट्री बी दिस लाइन शोज डोमेस्टिकली एक्सचेंज रेट ऑफ कंट्री ए डोमेस्टिकली कंट्री ए रिसीव ओनली एस टी यूनिट ऑफ एक्स गुड इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ ए एस यूनिट ऑफ वाई गुड यू कैन सी एस आर इज मोर देन एस टी वेन कंट्री डू इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड कंट्री ए रिसीव एस आर यूनिट ऑफ एक्स गुड इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ ए एस यूनिट ऑफ वाई गुड बट डोमेस्टिकली कंट्री ए वॉज रिसीविंग ओनली एस टी यूनिट ऑफ एक्स गुड इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ ए एस यूनिट ऑफ वाई गुड सो एस आर इज मोर देन एस टी दैट मीन्स कंट्री ए इज रिसीविंग मोर यूनिट ऑफ एक्स गुड इन इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड वेन वी माइनस एस आर फ्रॉम एस टी दिस रिमेनिंग टी आर पार्ट विल बी कॉल्ड गेन फ्रॉम ट्रेड ऑफ ए कंट्री सो ए कंट्री इज गेनिंग फ्रॉम इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड दैट इज इक्वल टू टी आर नाउ विल सी गेन फ्रॉम ट्रेड ऑफ बी कंट्री आफ्टर इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड बी कंट्री डू एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ आर वन एन वन दिस आर वन एन वन इज इक्वल टू एस वन बी वन एंड बी कंट्री डू इम्पोर्ट ऑफ आर वन एस वन दिस आर वन एस वन इज इक्वल टू एन वन बी वन But domestically, B country receive only T1 S1 in exchange of R1 N1. Please listen carefully. Domestically, B country only receive T1 S1 in exchange of R1 N1. But at international trade, B country is receiving R1 S1 in exchange of R1 N1. You can see R1 S1 is more than T1 S1. When we minus T1 S1 from R1 S1, this remaining this part R1 T1 will be called gain of B country from international trade. So R1 T1 will be called gain of B country from international trade. Now we will see increasing opportunity cost and international trade under increasing opportunity cost. Increasing opportunity cost means when opportunity cost of producing next unit will increase. Increasing opportunity cost means when opportunity cost of producing next unit will increase. For example, initially you give up only one tablet in order to produce one mobile, but after that, in order to produce one mobile, you are giving up two tablet. That means opportunity cost of producing means opportunity cost of producing one more unit of mobile is increasing. Same thing you can see in this diagram on x-axis we have mobile and y-axis we have tablet. Initially, in order to produce one unit of mobile, you are giving up only one unit of a tablet. But after that, in order to produce one unit of mobile, you are giving up a two unit of tablet. So we can say the opportunity cost of producing one unit of mobile is increasing, and this will be called production possibility curve. And in case of increasing opportunity cost, we have concave to origin production possibility curve. now we will see international trade under increasing opportunity cost here we assume we have only two countries a and b first of all we will see welfare of country a after international trade in this diagram on x axis we have x goods and y axis we have y goods this ab is production possibility curve of country a country a maximum produce oa unit of y and ob unit of x OA is more than OB. That means a uh, uh, country have comparative advantage in production of Y. That's why if international trade will occur, country will do specialization in production of Y. That means country A will increase the production and export of uh, goods Y. So uh, in this diagram, the dotted line shows domestic price line of country A. And this one, even. E one shows uh, international price line of country A. 
and before trade equilibrium point of country a is r at this r point country a is producing o m1 unit of y and o k2 unit of x now suppose international trade occurs and country a will do specialization in production of y so country a will increase production of y so after trade equilibrium point is e1 at this e1 point you can see country a increase production of y from m1 to m2 and reduce production of x from k2 to k1 so after international trade country produce total o m2 unit of y but consume only o m1 and remaining m1 m2 country a do export in b country so export of uh, the country a is equal to m1 m2 in exchange of m1 m2 country a is receiving uh, k1 k3 quantities of good x from country b because okay countries okay one quantity country a is producing themselves and uh, for exchange of uh, m1 m2 export uh, country a is receiving k1 k3 quantities of good x uh, good x from uh, country b so now we will see gain of country b after international trade before international trade country a was receiving total o k2 quantities of good x but after uh, international trade country a is receiving o k3 quantities of goods x so o k3 is more than o k2 so this remaining k2 k3 will be called gain of country a after international trade or we can say that k2 k3 will be called welfare of country a after international trade now we will see gain of country b after international trade country b will do specialization in x goods that means if international trade will occur country b will increase production and export of goods x before international trade equilibrium of country b at this e point at this e point uh, country b is producing o m2 units of y and o k unit of x now suppose international trade occurs now equilibrium at this e1 point at this e1 point you can see country b reduce production of y from o m2 to o m1 but increase production of x from o k to o k1 country producing o k1 units of x but consuming only o k and remaining k k1 country doing export in a country and x in exchange country b is receiving m1 m3 units of y from country a because o m1 country b is producing themselves and in exchange of k k1 country b is receiving m1 m3 units of y from country a now we will see gain of a country b after international trade before international trade country b was receiving o m2 unit of y but after international trade country b is receiving o m3 unit of y and uh, m2 m3 this part will be called gain of country b after international trade now we are going to talk about decreasing opportunity cost and international trade under decreasing opportunity cost decreasing opportunity cost means when opportunity cost of producing next unit will decrease decreasing opportunity cost means uh, opportunity cost of producing next unit will decrease for example initially in order to produce one mobile producer have to give up uh, three unit of tablet again when, when producer increase one more unit of mobile he need to give up only two unit of tablet again producer increase one more unit of mobile he need to give up only one unit of tablet here you can see opportunity cost of producing mobile is reducing same thing you can see in this diagram on x axis we have mobile and y axis we have tablet initially in order to produce one unit of mobile producer need to give up three unit of tablet again when producer increase one more unit of mobile he need to give up only two unit of tablet again producer increase one more unit of mobile he need to give up only one unit of tablet so we can say that opportunity cost of producing next unit is decreasing and here we have this production possibility curve and in case of decreasing opportunity cost we have production possibility curve which is con vex to origin now we will see international trade under decreasing opportunity cost here we assume we have only two countries a and b 
and A will specialize in production of Y and B will specialize in production of X. In this diagram on X axis we have X commodity and Y axis we have Y commodity. This is international price line. That means whenever we will do international trade, we will follow this line. And this A, A is production possibility curve of country A, this one. And this P, P is price line, means domestic price line of country A. This B, B, this one is production possibility curve of B. And this P1 is price line of, means domestic price line of country B. Before uh, international trade, equilibrium of country A at this E1 point. At this E1 point, you can see country A is producing OM unit of Y and OK unit of X. Now, suppose international trade occurs. After international trade, country A will do complete specialization in Y commodity. That means country A will produce only Y commodity. It will not produce any unit of X commodity. So after international trade, our new equilibrium point is at this R point. Here you can see country A is producing OA units of Y but consuming only OM. Remaining MA unit country A will do export in country B. And in exchange of MA unit of Y, country A is receiving N1, B1 unit of X from, from country B. Now we will see gain of country A after international trade. You can see before international trade, country A is receiving only OK unit of X. But after international trade, country A is receiving N1, B1 unit of X. So you can see, you clearly see N1, B1 is more than OK. And this gain of this excess amount of commodity X will be called gain of country A after international trade. Now we will see gain of country B after international trade. Before international trade, country B equilibrium point is on this E2 point. Before international trade, country B have equilibrium point at this E2 point. Here country B is producing ON unit of Y and ON1 unit of X. Now suppose international trade occurs and our new equilibrium point is R. And after international trade, country B do complete specialization in production of X. That means country B will only produce X commodity. It will not produce any unit of Y. So after international trade, country B is producing OB1 unit of X and consuming only ON1 unit of X. And remaining N1, B1 is doing export in country A. So in return of N1, B1, country B is receiving MA quantities of Y. Now we will see gain of country B after international trade. Before international trade, country B was receiving only ON unit of Y. But after international trade, it is receiving MA unit of Y. You can clearly see MA is more than ON. This excess amount of Y which country B is receiving after international trade will be called gain of country B after international trade. Now we will see criticism. This theory only talk about opportunity cost and ignore real cost. As we know, real cost also very important. And uh, this theory is based on factor supply is constant and ignore changes in factor supply. And based on unrealistic assumption, this theory is based on unrealistic assumption of perfect competition market, unrealistic assumption of full employment. And this theory don't clearly express the welfare of countries. Ignore changes in production possibility curve. Sometimes production possibility curve shift forward, sometimes shift backward, but this theory ignore changes in production possibility curve. So this is all about Hebler theory of opportunity cost. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye, take care.